guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dance Needles for another episode of Dance 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 Year, episode number 10. I've only got two more times to say it, I'm so sad. I really enjoyed saying the title of this one, the title is so much fun. We are on episode 10, there's only a few more episodes of the story left and this week's episode was very decisive. I will have to admit, hands up, I did actually check a few things before doing this episode just because last week it left me in a bit of a state where I was predicting a bad end. Won't lie, I went and had a little look and I saw they broke up and I was like, oh, okay, fine, it's going to happen. So I prepared myself. I am mentally prepared for the breakup that occurs this week. But a lot of this week's episode is a look into the past, into them as a child. Only about the last quarter is now. So a lot of this is set in the past, looking at Maury and Mirko and how they actually met in the first place. We get a big understanding on what was going on. There's a lot going on in this ep this episode. It's very dark as well. Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed. We are trying to hit 1k our subscribers by the end of the year. Can we do it? We're going to get more interactive, more videos, more live streams and more just fun things. I want to have a lot of fun things going on for everybody as well. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you give that subscribe button a little bit of love and let's get going for a a very decisive episode. The hunt for Mori begins and today's title itself was telling enough. It was Miyako, you need to be by his side. It's a decision that is made not even by Miyako initially, it's made by Junpei which felt initially a little bit more frustrating because he was making a choice for her which I get it but ah. Uh. Back into the dark side of ballet and I think a lot of this anime is mainly about the darker side of ballet. As I said last week a lot of the romance elements are aren't key they're not the main thing that drives this plot this is a sports anime and yes ballet kind of counts as a sport this is all about the darker side of the elite the people who are up the top and seeing how dark the world up there really is we have chizuru being abandoned by her own mother because she is japanese and she will never make it in a world where ballet is just for the russians and it's a european thing and japan has no business being within that and of course this is an outdated view but you can imagine there might be people like that and that terrifies me that there might be people like that who believe that so much so that chizuru is just abandoned by her own mother chizuru has had it absolutely rough and she's never had that parent growing up because you're not the right race and that's horrible. Maury's mother ended up being a idol and it ended up being a scandal. Lost Apple in the grandmother's eyes so she had another daughter who was Russian but she didn't want to do ballet. She wants to do idol. She wanted to dance and sing. This must have outraged the grandmother even more and we end up looking at the very toxic family that spirals and Maury ends up being the child that the grandmother ends up shoving all of her own dreams onto because she could never make it as a ballerina. She ends up hurting herself and never makes it. She ends up pushing her dreams onto Maury. Maury is only ever seen as his mother. That is horrible because the grandmother isn't seeing Maury as Maury, as his own child, as his own being. She's seeing him as a blank slate, somebody to push all of those expectations that she had onto him. Very toxic and it's really, really sad and just seeing this toxic idea about ba Japanese people not being allowed to ballet and the fact that she even says it to the kid. Wow, you're, you're saying that to a child. You, you have no boundaries, lady. It's just this exclusiveness. It's set in its own little world and old-fashioned ways. I don't know about the ballet profession today i would hope we've come a lot further than this ideal but i don't know much about ballet that's why i'm hoping the anime will show us that the ballet world has become a lot more inclusive hopefully so from the lilac fairy to the demon the villain of the play the grandmother's attitude very quickly the child cottons on that she's the villain not so much the fairy that she initially sees and miyako initially seeing the grandmother as once upon a time you were this lilac fairy but now you turned into the old lady in the woods who's isolated herself and who hates everybody built up toxicity within her so Mori and Miyako end up meeting in secret they are sharing sweets they're doing something they know their parents won't agree with in secret because both of them initially have this restrictive growing up childhood but obviously Mori is a lot worse than Miyako this childlike purity to her because she wants to be friends she wants to play with Mori she wants to be inclusive take him home he's related to me I want to play this is that niceness that you get with kids I like the idea that kids aren't born racist they are taught to be racist all kids are happy to play with whoever they want to play with because they're young, they're happy. Those ideals haven't been pushed onto them. I love that, but seeing that Mori is just accepted immediately by Miyako. The toxic effect of growing up the way that he has and the abusiveness really does take a dark turn. And this is our very dark turn when we see Mori grabbing a handful of pills going suicidal. 
And that's how dangerous growing up like this is. And obviously, we knew there were effects because Maury is socially awkward, can't read the signs around him, doesn't like people. This is even one of those things where you're seeing a literal child threatening to end everything. And that's how dark we're really going. So this week's episode was very dark and it touched upon some dark topics. Some of you guys might know about what happened last month to me on my own personal self. I don't really like to talk about personal stuff too much in these videos, but it was a episode that did knock a few nerves but we are continuing with it because i've already abandoned a show on the channel so i'm going to continue as much to see this one through but it's just this toxicness that affects this child he himself carrying on his grandmother's views that oh only russian people can dance and japanese people are not allowed to dance maury continues this cycle the vicious cycle because he's picked up these bad attitudes from his grandma we should learn from my grandmother my grandmother's way is the way you know this is how we dance this is what we should do don't be like your mum. he actually physically says that and you're like wow that is toxic and his child doesn't know any better because the people who should be there to look after him are abusing him maury and miyako's relationship initially is one of dependency. Maury depends on her to allow him to have two hours a day of escapism, escaping from that hell that he is in, the cage that he is in. Miyako allows him to be himself and sets him free. Those are the two hours where he's allowed to dance as himself and be himself because she sees him as Maury, not as Mizuru, not as the mother. Now to her, it's a chance to practice her piano and everything. She wants to set him free. It's a relationship where if you were to ask me even later on if I believed it was romantic, I would still say no one is dependent so yeah maury may love her but miyako as we even see when she gets angry at the breakup that she did enjoy being with him and eventually it's junpei's pushing that pushes her away she wants to set him free be a cousin and i don't believe anything romantic on that side exists i don't see that there i see maybe more on maury's side but not on her side i do love the quote though about practice if you skip one day you're the one who's going to be able to tell. You skip two, the dancers around you are going to start knowing. And if you skip three, the audience will know. I really like this for some reason. Interesting to know that the grandmother is being very two-faced because she's using a Japanese quote when she teaches this to Mori. All this time we've seen her looking down on Japanese dancers. Miyako's upbringing, not quite the greatest upbringing because her mother didn't expect her to do a great deal. She didn't expect her to dance because you are, no, you are Japanese, you're not going to make it to the top pro or anything. You can just dance for fun. So we see this attitude and initially this is rebellious from her mother. It's my mother forced Mori to dance and she's forceful. Therefore, I'm going to be rebellious and be the opposite. I'm not forcing you to dance. But although she is technically accepting that Japanese people can't dance, she's just allowing her to have fun. There's a negative side to this. So as much as that sounds great, there's a negative side because to Miyako, it sounds like you're going, well, you're not good enough. Therefore, you can do what you want. Miyako ends up just dancing for the fun of it. But Miyako ends up stating to Mori, I want to dance. I want to be that princess. It's sad because that's the downside to the mother trying to be a bit more hands off with her, the approach. But Miyako wants to go pro. The love for dance, being able to dance without this toxic reason is what we're seeing with Miyako. She ends up loving dance for the good reasons. We do see Mori turning his back on Miyako to continue dancing. If it is love, it's a very toxic love because he only picks her at the end because she's there clinging to things that are around him. And he, she's the first person who's seen him as himself, escapism that she provided. But when he does turn his back initially on her as a kid and he goes back to his grandmother's way, I don't know anything but my grandmother's teaching. I'm scared. It's a bit of Stockholm Syndrome as well. It's one of those things where if you were to ask me if it's love, I'm going to tell you no, yes. They love each other, but he loves her in a different way than she loves him. Miyako vows to become pro so she can be paired up with Mori and never leave his side. So she is essentially dancing for Mori, a vow she made when she was younger. So whether she's continuing this vow and things have changed since he came to live with them, not quite sure. But apparently when he did come to live with them in the end after shoplifting, things weren't the same. They didn't talk as much. So things had changed a little bit. Poor, poor Junpei ends up hearing everything and this is when we finally flick back to the present this is when junpei ends the relationship because he believes that she needs to be by mori's side he makes the decision for her which really did upset me because he ignores how she feels she is upset by this because she actually enjoyed being with him she doesn't even regret being with him she was the one who was planning things for their date together yeah i told you guys i already knew about the breakup so i had prepared myself that this breakup was coming i can imagine some people out there who didn't know it was coming might be a little bit upset. I'm upset because Junpei made the decision for Miyako. 
I, that's the only reason I'm upset right now. I don't know if I'm upset because they're not together because I haven't really seen too much to indicate that they do like each other. When the kiss came left field, I was like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that to happen. I'm not quite upset about that. I'm more upset because he's made the decision ignoring how she feels and she is hurt because she actually wanted to be with him. She's like, what about us? And Junpei's obviously made that decision in his head. Thinks he's being self. He's thinking about Mori, not how he feels. Painful because you're hurting somebody else in the process and taking away her ability to even make a choice final part where we see maury dancing the female part in front of the grandmother who's got dementia by this point who doesn't even know who's in front of her only seeing her daughter dancing in front not seeing maury never seeing maury as maury only ever seeing her daughter maury has finally accepted this and he's just dancing the female part over and over because it makes his grandmother happy and that's all he's ever wanted to have that acknowledgement just by her the sad thing is she's not acknowledging him she's acknowledging her daughter who isn't there even even if it is a kind of gratitude and she's saying this is amazing blah 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 but she's got dementia she doesn't know what she's seeing it is really sad it's toxic the Junpei trying to recognize Mori he recognizes the curse that's been put on Mori and decides that the world needs to see Mori for Mori and not his mother stop saying you're gonna do great things because of the mother who you come from it's not about your roots it's about you props to Junpei for doing this because somebody needs to shake it into Mori that you are yourself and not your mother Junpei pushes for the Rothbard dance show the world your dance because this is the one you ended up dancing this was your dancing he sees Mori as a person and that's when the painful bit of Miyako it looks like she's going in for a kiss and obviously that upsets Mori but she's not she's basically accepting the role that has been forced upon her once again you have to be by Mori's side which is really upsetting because you're taking away Miyako's power of choice the relationship's gone we have broken up in the dance as well we've got Mori winning as Rothbert taking away the princess away from the prince and then taking Miyako away putting the play into the events of the story but this time around we're seeing Rothbard winning. It's nice to see them incorporating the ballet play into the events of the story. Another intriguing episode. It was interesting to learn the dark story and see some of those more darker elements. I can understand why people didn't want to touch this one because they were invested in Junpei and Miyako getting together and then maybe they heard about the breakup thing that happens. Nothing's really gone anywhere. I know the anime is still airing nothing's really been decisive or anything so at the moment you could still have that it's just nothing's been decided right now from what I can tell and that's me trying not to do anything with spoilers there's no spoilers there if you are put off by the breakup that has just happened it's not a confirmation we've got no ending right now so anything can still happen so maybe eventually they will get together but now isn't the right time I hope so maybe that's the case Maury's dependency on Miyako is still toxic it's a dependency that he's grown because she's the only person that's been around that is still toxic because they are technically cousins but I don't know what cousins they are they're probably first cousins which means it's wrong so it's just generally wrong and I do hope that line is ironed out thank you guys so much for tuning in thank you for your continued support I will see you again next week have a good day guys bye bye